Hi there, I've done this like a hundred times, so I'm just going to get over with. This is the preludes to Dragonland Shadow of the Dragon Queen. You're going to see two of the preludes. You're going to see Eye in the Sky for our Sorcerer, and then you're going to see Scales of War for our three martial classes. I completely forgot to do the one for the Paladin, and my other Paladin had to drop out at the last moment, so we didn't have a recording for the Paladin, unfortunately. Now, the maps provided to us were the official maps in the book that were edited by Tessa Moorcroft, and then she then went and created 94 other maps for this campaign, which we will be using. Tessa very kindly gave us these maps for use in the campaign for free. You can buy them on on DMs Guild if you look up Tessa Presents. You also find maps for Icewind Dale, Curse of Strahd and many others. She has a great selection and they are all very reasonably priced. Anyway, let's start this off with Eye in the Sky with our Sorcerer. This is before we have the map so it's all theatre of the mind. You can kind of watch it all work out as I do stuff on the map. That will then follow up with the Scales of War with our martial classes. And then from there, the first episode will go live March 6th at 7pm UK GMT and that makes it 2pm EST. So, till then guys, let's go on with Eye in the Sky. So, okay. welcome to Kryn. A rather tumultuous land. A lot of things have happened. There was wars. This whole part in the sea over here. This whole part used to be an island or something. So, you know. Didn't go too well for them. Clearly. Uh, dragons. Basically a myth in this land. Whereas in Beirun and Toril, when you said dragon, someone screamed and shouted where? Here, if you point and say <laughs> dragon, someone looks you dead what? in the eye and goes, wow, you are funny. <laughs> funny because the map also has some dragons on it. You their um, myth. You know? The Scottish national... The, the, the Scottish national creature is a fucking unicorn. <laughs> like... <laughs> At least there's proof dragons existed in this universe. <laughs> Unicorns never existed. Well, you, never, you never know. So, as it was for Melano years and years and years ago, Melano crashed in a strange world. The world that is known as Kryn. With it, she was unsure of where she was and had no true way of getting home. Time slowly passed in the world and she came to settle. In settling, she made a good friend in a human male known as Epson Greenshield. Epson spent time with her, helped her accumulate to the planet, get her bearings, and introduced her to the wider world. Eventually, she felt brave enough and ventured out on her own on more than one occasion over the years. One year, things got weird. During the three moon eclipse, taken in by its beauty and feeling a strange change in her sorcerer powers, Melano was reminded of a group of sorcerers, mages, wizards, who could help her understand what's going on, maybe help her understand how she could get home, and also hone... No, her oh. home is destroyed. Oh yeah, fuck. That's on me. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, stranger in a strange land. As soon as you say, I'm a heart attack. <laughs> Maybe help her understand her powers and feel more at home in her new home. She went to this group. Firstly, to just study their tomes, but eventually joined their ranks. In joining their ranks, you were able to get an idea as to everything that was going on. You learned that the mages of high sorcery harness magical powers from Krenn's three moons. Solinari the white, Lunatari the red, and Nutari the black. Those blessed by the moons show talents for magic and with proper training become apprentice mages. And to be accepted, they must overcome a difficult challenge to join the mages. Failing the test can be deadly, but those who dare to seek the power without passing the test are branded renegades. And not wanting to be an outlaw in a strange land. And always on a willing knack to learn. Melano joined. After quite some time, it was Melano's coming of age in the society. In a centuries old spire known as the Barb, where promising apprentice mages go to test their magic. Under the night of the eye, where you feel your strongest, he's awake. Tonight is an important night. Ahead of you rises the barb, a jagged half ruined spire of grey stone. Many who aspire to join the mages of high society have come here to prove their magical proficiency. The barb is usually nothing more than a rune in its construction, predating the cataclysm. But tonight, on the night of the eye, when Kryn's three moons align, the rune is alive with magic once more, a soft light shimmer from the archway leading into the structure. You feel an unease walking in as you know why you're here. And you know the consequences as to what can happen. So you just look around, there are other participants there with you who are just as eager. As the arch opens into a large atrium lit with flaming sconces and adorned by grand tapestries depicting the three moons. Doors circle the room, the light of the moon cascades through broad windows high above. At the centre of the room stands a serene looking woman with long grey hair and red robes. As you enter, she nods. As you look round, everyone seems to be Preparing themselves as the woman looks for she the room goes silent. I am Rovina and I am the caretaker of the barb. Tonight you are here for your Tests. Make no mistakes that in passing these tests you are welcomed wholeheartedly as a fully fledged member of the mages of. They have a dumb name and I do not like it, I'll be honest with you. The <laughs> High Sorcery. The mages of High Sorcery. 
To fail could spell death. Tonight is a joyous night for all. But the rest of your life does also hang in the balance. Be warned. Your tests will test all of your magics so far. She look round. You notice the room is rather off. You can't quite place your finger on it. Can I have a perception check, please. This room is off. Off oh, to a great start. <laughs> that that room's scary, man. <laughs> As Ravina walks round the grand tome in hand, she parts it open. <clears throat> she starts calling names and pointing to one of three doors. This is all lying by your door. She looks. To pass. Tonight's tests, you must face a trial in one of these rooms, which are only accessible at night. This trial requires talent and provides foundations. Your goal is simply to complete this challenge and for yourselves, complete your challenge only. You have until the night of the eye ends, at which point the room will vanish, expelling everything within it. She watches all of the mages look around as they do. One by one, as doors open and close, people go in and out. As the door opens wide for yourself. Into a wide rotundra with black stone floors and walls carved with elaborate runes. The interior of this room is empty, save for a single pedestal at the centre. Atop this pedestal, balances an ornate key upon its tip. Behind you, you hear the door and as it does, the room seals. On the opposite side of the room, an identical door closes. As you look into this area, it is rather straightforward. What do you wish to do? Um, <clears throat> I want to look around the room first before, like, there are two doors and a key on a paddle still, right? Yeah, there's no map for this, I do apologize. No worries. Is there anything else in the room, or just the pedestal with the key? Circular room with a pedestal and the key, and what you can assume was a door on the other end that also closed. <clears throat> Is there a window? completely black room in that regard bar you know bar ruins that seem to glow and glisten on the wall to give off some semblance of light okay. <clears throat> i'll approach the the pedestal and i As you assume walk it's forward kind of magical do you walk forward you hit 
something. Invisible? You get, you get no further than five foot before you seem to walk head first into something in front of you. Something invisible, but you can't you can't see this particular thing. I'm gonna put my hand on it and like start moving to see how far it goes, I guess. So I'm I'm assuming that there's a s invisible barrier in front of the pedestal that we need to do something about to get there. In which direction are you walking? To the left. Like in a yep. circle around the pedestal. So you walk to the left. Eventually, your finger does come off whatever it is there and wafts into thin air. There is still a room around. Um, I'm gonna turn like a corner. Or is it just this, this that line, or is it like does it continue in a different um, angle? So what I I'll draw for ease for you to get you an idea of what I'm getting at. So um, let's let's use the blood sea of a star. Okay. Uh, uh, make it kind of big, yeah. Here's your room. Mm -hmm. And then yourself. Let's say you were here. You then walk to the left. I mean, I could just move my token here. You could, and then what I'll do, uh, grids as low as it'll go, so... Yeah, um, you walk forward, at which point you... hit something... and walk left. As you kept walking left, eventually whatever you were dragging your finger on... your finger was no longer being dragged on. Okay. I'm gonna try to step forward then. So you step forward once... You know, one step forward, you do feel that there is nothing stopping you. Okay. I'm gonna put my hand, like, see if, to see if there's a wall, same see if similar wall here, or just nothing. As you do, you feel another wall. More... I'm just gonna map out the wall around. Yep. And we'll see then as to make this a lot easier on you and I. Uh, please and thank you, sir. If I zoom out too much, that's gonna look like a boob. <laughs> also... Can I... Um... Use prestidigitation to make like a line, I mean a small mark, like like trying to, th like so that I can see where the barrier is, like all around it. Yeah. So you kind of, I would say use it to like make some form of spray or such that holds to it. The way press it is to Prejudication as it's really. Mm, you make a, a color, color a small yep. mark, or a symbol appear on an object or a surface for one hour. Yeah, yeah. As you mark that particular area there, I'll just change color real quick. Uh, line width, uh, please go line width one. I will love you forever. And I'll use green. Could you just move your token a little bit to the left real quick? It's 
Of the Mayu. There you go. You know, mark the corner area and such. You can swipe it along to kind of create an arrow as such with your thumb. Just always helps when I put my webcam on so you can see what I'm doing to give a better example. Sort of, you know, Simba, if you will. Need to mark it. So mm. Walk around some more. You can hear other footsteps. Though you don't see them. This is a very gross exa under-exaggeration of how big this is. But you can also hear them as you're walking around. However, the light is not strong enough to show anyone on the other end, even though you have dark vision. Mm. The room is more than 60 foot. <laughs> <laughs> Can I conjure Mage Hand to see how high the barrier is? Hmm. Doesn't say you can't. So you run this up. As the mage hand goes up and up and up and up and up. Eventually, you watch as the mage hand seems to almost loop back on itself. It's floor to ceiling. Ah, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Here's, I just found for you, which could help. Uh, <clears throat> 70, 80, 90. This is the size of the room. I, I, it is giving me one, which is great. I wonder if I change then to cyan. Ah, oh, even better. I can then go cyan, right? Ah, oh, yes. Yes, I can so help you out now. Ah, <laughs> uh, please make your way into the grid templates instead. Here you go. I got you, don't worry. There you go. You were <laughs> like here. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot better than something crudely drawn. Hey. Hmm. And now I can start doing crude drawings that make a little bit more sense. <laughs> <laughs> For example, you marked this area here. Green is probably not the best colour for that now. It's white. Then. Orange. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's more like yeah, brown. More like that. You, you've got a marked off a corner, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Mm. As the mage hand goes up, the invisible barrier is oh, floor to ceiling. Can face that we use to enter barriers? Whilst yes, as long as you can see. The thing is, you don't know where the barrier ends. But as I can 100% see where you're coming from, because it's just basically a misty step. But because there's an invisible barrier where you look, 
you could bisect yourself. Yeah. Last thing I want is to say, all right, roll up another character. <laughs> I hate killing level <laughs> ones. No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> Do you know what? This campaign isn't for me. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, yeah, give yourself that back. I feel yeah. I should mention. I mean, it's a feature. It's still um, it's still got limited uses though. You use, I think you can only uh. get one use of it right now per long rest. Short rest, yeah. Yep. Yeah, no. If you finish a short or long rest, yeah. I, okay, you got it back. I get how that levels. Hmm. I guess I'll. If, it, if we need to use ma if they were you were told to use magic to get to do it. Hmm. I guess I'll try sacred flame on the barrier to see if I can see if you... reach it. Did you dang it off. You watch as it engulfs, you see half under and half through. As then it gets between the wall, you see it coming up on both ends. You kind of hear it in the room. As a sort of reverberation of it. Hmm. So it didn't work. It did not work, no. And there was someone, something invisible around as well. Like footsteps you mentioned. You can hear footsteps ticking off. It's a rather large and empty chamber by all other accounts. You got runes up the walls, um, an invisible thing, a pedestal, and that was two doors. Apart from that, it's completely encased in stone. I'll try to go to the door to to the up the one. Yep. Up there. Yep. Let's see if you can. Uh, Run round, sort of trace it. Yeah, just jump through. Just jump, fuck it. It's not an actual wall, women. <laughs> As you kind of go through, trailing, just to get a feel mentally, to get to the other side. It is the same as your side. There is nothing bar the runes on the wall. No. No inclination. No inclination as to where the door started or where it ends stay flat i'd say flat let's he hemispherical and rounding wall i guess i i'll just for the sake of it i'll just try to open it even though i know it's probably <laughs> law <laughs> you never know <laughs> so you're just gonna push and investigate around where the door should be Mm. All stone. You know you walk through a wooden door and you feel it around that whole area. No wood. Can I? Use precipitation around the door area to see, like, a like a f flower effect, like a poof of some sort, to see if to see if it's like any... thunder or such. To see if there's anything, yeah, like a hole or something. Yeah. Is you off on that particular area around the wall? The smoke rises before dissipating out through the room. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm gonna take a look at the key on the pedestal. Yeah. How big is it? Reasonably, I want to say it's small, but from a hundred foot away, you're not going to see a small key. Um, so let's say it's about the size of a can of coke. <laughs> In terms of like, you know, length, it's a very long key, but maybe a quarter of an inch thick. I want to like memorize, like look at as many like extreme details of the key, like just to try it to see it in my mind like exact like the exact details of it is it possible from 100 see, foot from away you can get head? from 100 foot away you can get like some sort of rough details but as for, like you know it's full on exact you know you ain't mm. get the observant feet quite yet <laughs> no cuz i f thought you know um, even though you said no but if i can see it I can create a non-magical trinket that can fit in my hand. <laughs> I could maybe they make a duplicate. Until so you can make as close enough a duplicate as you can from what you can see. Just because of the distance yeah, okay. and that. Is you do make the non-magical key trinket. <laughs> okay. I don't have a semi-duplicate key then. <laughs> The end goal is that little bit closer now. <laughs> mm. Were we told what door? What? 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 Should we exit the same door, or what were we told to do? Again, from Marina. Pass the test. Ah. Then I'll try to. I guess go back to the original door and try to unlock it with the duplicate semi duplicate key. There's no door on that end either. Oh, it disappeared. Unless the is it is the wooden door on the other side now? No, I see you're going with this, but now <laughs> there's no doors in the room at all. Ah. Stone wall, okay. invisible something, key. I've just realised it's like the eye puzzle. It's like the eye of the moons, rather. <laughs> Big something, medium something, small something. <laughs> mm. To be honest, I'm completely lost. <laughs> I'm not firing all my cylinders right now with the puzzles. I will say, mm. you you can make checks as well, you know. You got you got one bad perception check, but any other checks, you know, they can be good. I guess as a tackler, trust me. <laughs> Um, I don't know how to break the barrier though, like, not with my set, set of spells, probably. So I'll say, running through all of this, you can spend an hour and then make either an intelligence or specifically a general intelligence or a specific arcana check after that hour has passed. I'm not going to make you sit here and wait a fucking hour. <laughs> I guess I'll try to touch the barrier and see what kind of if I what kind of magic I can feel from it. Just go ahead and give yourself back the the the, mist, the face step if you because you just used face. I colored it purple. <laughs> 
No, I, I still have one of what oh. one uses of it. Don't let it flash. Um, as a seasoned sorcerer, seasoned sorcerer, sorcerer, um, you can tell that it's transmutation magic at play. That'd be something you'd be innately aware that to create an invisible wall is from the transmutation skill of magic. And then for my next transmutation, meet my daughter and her dog. I know the reference, I know. Chimera, Chimera, I, 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 I can't not make the reference though, that's the worst part. I guess I'll try Firebolt next. See if it can penetrate. Yep. It says you fire off a Firebolt. You watch as the Firebolt forwards through. And as it does, where are you firing it? So no. Like just straight line? Mm hmm. As it does, you watch the Firebolt hits as it does and you watch as part of the fireball extends further five foot from where it hit on the right I kind of follow towards there and try to touch it the barrier and see if I can move forward fucking hex grids as you're gonna touch the barrier you feel a corner by your thumb, you need to push forward. You feel nothing. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna. F it's like a labyrinth. Okay. Okay. Um. You see. What do? What do? I, what do I have? I do have an, a diary. I'm gonna make like a shape of the. Yep. Thingy the barrier and like quick like cubes or whatever they're called like tiles and mark the corner where i'm and i'm trying to like just follow the corner with my hand until i reach something mark mark there and like follow the just keep to the left see if it's a labyrinth so you're like Pushing left and seeing what you can feel. Mm -hmm. Now it says you drag your hand around you until such point as your hand is at an angle. You feel a wall before you feel nothing on the left. Okay, I'm gonna draw that in and follow, I guess. If you move to the left, you hit the wall. What about. Bear in mind. Touching wall, no longer touching wall. <laughs> very, very light in a five foot space, how much you can get with your arms. Uh, I'm gonna move in a circle then and just feel everything around in a five, five or a ten foot radius. Well, so you do feel that the area that you are in is only five foot wide. Okay. So you are. You are going to regret drawing, Matthew, but... That's about as good as it's going to get. <laughs> These two lights. Okay. Okay. Do they move... Is it like a, just a block in, or can I move forward? As you do put your hands forward, you don't feel anything. Okay. Excuse the fact, it's a, it's a hex grid that has gone below. I would say you're easy. move forward and hold shift. Okay. And then just remember I'll... to constantly hold shift. Yeah, and I'll just extend both my arms, I guess, to see if there are walls on the both, both sides. Or no, I'm gonna use my hand on the left side and the mage hand on the, le on the right side. I mean, again, okay, again, again cool. five foot. Yeah. Um. 
just move it to the next hex. It makes it easier for you and I. No, the next <laughs> hex over. Um, I don't know if you're okay. seeing my mouse. You probably shouldn't, but don't worry. I did. I did. For so the for this. Hand. For this, yeah, the purple Biggest hand. hand. <laughs> but the um the little dot, like you've got a little dot. I don't know if that's a thing for you. That you see for me now, yeah. Um, it should be off, but if it's on right now, that's cool. I don't see any dots. That's right. I'll just use the big X. So we'll move. Maybe bad. So I'll just use the that one. Okay. 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 Just start placing out once more. You don't feel anything to your. You, you, you've got to walk forward. You hit the wall. Ouch. Okay. So we'll see. You um, are where there is a wall. Okay, I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna send a firebolt this way. Let me. Yep. See how far I can move. So you're gonna fire off. You watch as the firebolt is about 10 foot or so before. I've drawn a wall there when I realised I should have drawn a wall, like... I'm gonna work it with the hexes just to make it easy. Okay. Um... So I can move up to here. Yeah, let's... Just to make it easy, you can move into one of those two. Yeah. Oh yeah, right in the middle. Yeah. Um... Is a wall over here? Is it a wall? Is there a wall? I mean... Once you push out, you do in fact feel a wall. What about on the other side? There is no wall. Firebolt! Oops. Firebolt was five foot. Like Make that much easier, yeah. <laughs> it's just gonna wall this in such a way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna feel... I'm gonna... This was the this was the wall. Okay, so I'm gonna feel from like down and up. Both sides are clear. I'm gonna send the firebolt up. To watch the firebolt going up, it was about ten foot before splashing. Repeat with left and right. My hands. Right okay. as he. Splash. Fireball to the right. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Tried to really line that one up so at least you were in a grid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down and up. It extends in both directions. I'm gonna send the firebolt up. He watches the firebolt splits. Um, where is the pedestal? Like here? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's say the pedestal is. I'm gonna now change my color once more. Ah, uh, what's a nice color for this one? Let's use. No, let's not use purple because purple's already. Let's use a nice. Blue. Ah, uh, pedestal. Nope. nope. Yeah. Let's just say the pedestal is um, like there. Rather big. Left, right hand. Solid. Both solid. Both solid. Okay, so I'm gonna send the firebolt down then. The firebolt 
Go get my alignments. I guess I'll go down there then. Um, left, right. The right, which is here, is solid. Okay, firebolt to here. Oh, it both solid? No, just the other side. Here, uh, your left character's right. Okay, so I'm gonna send the firebolt here. Send the firebolt up. I'm lining as best I can, ma. <laughs> Well, at least I figured it out. <laughs> it's a reference. <laughs> the eye am completely winging. <laughs> the book has nothing. I am winging it. Okay. Both sides. As you watch on both sides as the firebolt fires off to your right. Your right, player left. You watch as it splashes up on the runic wall on the outside. Ah, so there's the exit. Cool. And on the other side? Come on. Do you... Burn it off. Things I ain't good at. Lines. At least straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> you fire it off in both directions I think it was 10 foot as you, you feel both directions and in both directions the firebolt goes 10 foot uh, which is like here and I'm just really that ain't even 10 foot between them <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna move up 10 feet. Yeah, and I'll just put it here because it's a nice straight border. Okay. Both sides again. So you feel off on both sides. The left hand side is empty. And you fire bolt. I need to bring back the windrows for these things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up, down. Both of them are... Good. I'm going to say 20 foot. I was about to say 50. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. 20 foot. So I don't think we got 50 foot there, man. I don't think I had a work. I guess, the, I guess the firebolt hits this wall here. Yeah. Yeah, there's a boom. Hits this wall here. Which you are distinctly aware of. Okay. So, left, right. There's this. So you fire the firebolt off. There's 120 foot in either direction. You watch it actually Ooh. fizzles out of existence. Curse me so and making I'm shit not... interesting. It's like. So I'm here. I'm at the pedestal. Let's say 80. Let's say 80. So I realize 120 you walk past there. Let's say 80 foot in either direction. So for here, it goes off to. Market math here. That's 80 over here. So and like... 80 over here if we go for miles. <laughs> yeah, I'm just using the mail indicator. So yeah, I'm, I'm at the pedestal, I guess, or am I not? Do you push forward? I feel a wall. In front of the pedestal. In front of the pedestal. Okay. 
I guess I'm just gonna, like, put my hand on the, on the wall and just go over, it, like, as far as I can here until I, the wall disappears from my hand. From my hand, yeah. And I'll see as you get to about here, the wall disappears, so realize I drew a very long wall. Yeah. There we go. But I was just like, good fucking luck on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fireball down there, I guess. It's a fireball down, it goes down about 30 foot. Fireball in both directions again. I needed that for that. And. Okay. Down and up. Feeling down, wall going up. Blank. Until. As, as you're going like that, one side is wall one side is blank oh unless you're saying you're firing a firebolt yeah <laughs> explodes almost in your face ah okay so this is also walled off no you don't feel anything in your hand no step off let's take a step forward then yeah so you do you feel to the left To your right, you play a right, uh, you feel wall. Yeah. The left, mm -hmm. you feel nothing. And to the up, I feel a wall as well. That's where the fireball blew up. I say fireball, yeah. firebolt. Okay, I'm gonna go here and send the firebolt here. Or like in this direction. Okay. Send the firebolt up. I'm just trying to, like, you know, align these in just a way that is easy for me. <laughs> Walk like five foot here. And... You walk, you hit nothing. Okay, I'm gonna take another step. As you walk once more, you feel nothing. And I'm gonna take another step to the pedestal, I guess. As you do, you walk into pedestal area. Up a small set of stairs. To where you are, right next to the key. Is there anything preventing me from taking the key, like another barrier? You won't know until you try and grab it. Can I check for traps? <laughs> ah, yes, the sorcerer rogue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yeah, you can you can check for it. That's perception or investigation. I think it's investigation for traps. Uh, it's fifty-fifty perception if you wish to. Glance yeah, around and see an invest investigation if you want to be at a good, you know. Ooh, what does this button do? Okay, much better. Seems fine, but bear in mind you couldn't perceive the walls you've had to navigate. Oh! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm gonna try to make another poof like a flower over the ring I guess you, you watch as the smoke rises as smoke would do it doesn't seem to be sucked anywhere okay, I'm <laughs> gather my courage pray to luminari or whatever and <laughs> just pick the pick up the ring the, the key it's you 
reach out and grab. You just hear a <coughs> as you watch as you hear off in the other end. Whoa! Okay. You see walls around seem to have vanished. I need to get rid of all these drones, else people are going to wonder what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> As the walls vanish, you look. So on the other end of the room, light on the runic wall seems to create an archway from whence you came. Like just a light of an arch of light. What color? White. Okay. Um. Nothing else in the room. Just the white arch of color. It's the white arch of color. Okay. I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna walk into it. Praying to Luminari. I feel, again. Like, I feel like I've not been too clear on that there. It's not like an open arch, it's just a lined arch. If that makes sense. Yeah, like... Um, I'm trying to think of a... Like the... It's like um, if you've got a really kind of loose door, and your room is completely black, but the light on the other side is on, you kind of see that. If that makes sense now. Like light like seeping the through. Star Trek teleportation? Mm, no. Uh, it is is an arch, but like you know, a line as opposed to a full white shape. I can't. I'm trying to imagine it. I mean, like, I'm, I'm trying to describe it, it, and I'm like, just but... I've just been horrible at the description. I'll just fucking draw it. Um. Yeah. I'm trying to find a gift for something. <laughs> oh wait, let me just. You just have this. Ah, I mean wall, I know that. Wall, that's wall, and then there. just no wall, wall, and just this is light. Ah, okay. I guess I'm gonna walk through it then. As you walk to it, you feel that it's made of wood. You I'm gonna walk into it. look if there is a keyhole there somewhere. There is a keyhole. I'm gonna put the key in. As you do, you turn the key. Before you even finished, the key vanishes. And the archway opens to a miasma of blues, greens, reds, and whites. I'm gonna go into the whites. Uh, it's just swirly like colours, but as you oh, okay. walk in through, you emerge back at the spire. Pretty sure it was not called the spire, but you know, the barb. The barb, the spire. Same shit, I different mean, day in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's the building in the shape of a spire, you can call it a spire, but it's called, but its name is the barb, so it's, it's it fits either way. Okay, DM, so I'm all done. <laughs> <laughs> As you walk out of the room, passing through, emerging in the atrium of the barn, the woman, Ravina, looks. Well, it would appear your apprenticeship has been completed. You are ready to take the next steps to being a mage of high sorcery. However, I recommend that you take this right now. She hands you this rather ornate looking tome. You can fill this in however you wish, 
notes, spells, anything you deem worthy. This is yours. Wizards often use them as spell books. That Thank is you. the matters. That we must now give you this. And she's gonna reaches into the arm of her robe. She pulls out this. Rather thick, ornate scroll. If you find Wyhan residing in the city of Calaman near Volga, he will assist you. If you take these scrolls and give them to him, realize I am Bebe, he will train you in your next steps. However, under no circumstances should the scroll be opened. Tis for his eyes only. He will help you on your next step to becoming a mage of high sorcery. Okay. Do you have any okay. other questions? Out of character, yes. Can you repeat the character's name and where he is from? Waihan. It said, don't worry. Uh, so that's his name. Okay. Waihan. He is in the city of Kalaman. Near. Volga. Vogler. Sorry, I'm, I, I've been calling it Vogler the whole time. Vogler. Okay. So Vogler Town, Calaman City, Waihan person. Okay. Um, and it's only one scroll or a bunch of scrolls? One scroll. Okay. Thank you. There any other questions that you have for us? Mm, not really. Thank you for all your help so far. She watches, she nods. I appreciate it. There's one more thing that we feel pertinent to tell you, but after what had happened, we would rather you going into your test with the best intention. She watches, she once more goes in, pulls out a small scroll. About as big as this salt shaker. <laughs> <laughs> With a tied little bow. This arrived for you this morning. Thank you. I'm gonna take it and open it to read it, I guess. you open up the letter start reading dear friend I am Becklin Uth Velhan I've heard much from you from our mutual friend Espen Greenshield it grieves me to share this news that our friend has passed away peacefully in his home in Vogler may fortune and the Old gods protect his soul. Espen's friends are holding a memorial for him in a manner that he always wanted. It will take place here in Vogler on the eve of King Fisher's festival. I write to ask you to do Espen this one last honour and attend. Should you come, accommodation shall be available at the Brass Crab. Though the circumstances are sad, I'm eager to meet you and through our memories to reveal in life, to reveal a, in life, to revel in the life our good friend had. 
Becklin Uth Bellarn. Knight of the Crown. As the woman places her hand on your shoulder, you can see why we withheld this from you until now. Yes, I can see. It seems that you are destined to head to Volga, Wagner. Do so at your own leisure. We wish you the best of luck in your journey. Thank you. And as the time passes, as you leave the barb, feeling old swirls of emotion. A man who helped you come to this world with joy as opposed to fear, who broke you out of your shell and got you to where you are. Past. Having passed your test, knowing that you could be a mage of high sorcery. The path to the town is long. And in that, a contemplative journey, nonetheless. As so this happens, you feel your connection to the world slowly wane. You feel solace knowing that your powers are solidified and you yourself may make some new friends. You soon arrive in the town of Vogler. The fishing village of Vogler clings to a spit of land reaching into the Vigard River. Wooded cliffs overlook the community. I'll do you one better. And I hope I've turned off token vision. I did it. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I have it now. It's you. Yeah, yeah. The fishing village also, of Vogler. no more hexagons! Yay! <laughs> the fishing village of Vogler clings to a spit of land reaching into the Vigard River. Wooded cliffs overlook this community. And the only path from the north descends past ivy covered remnants of crumbling stone keeps. The village's modest wood buildings cluster around quaint, the quaint central circle and along the riverbank. Jutting the river out of place and seemingly out of line stands an incomplete stone bridge of incredible artisanal ship. The structure clearly dates before the cataclysm, eclipsing its modern piers in size and sturdiness. The bridge crosses less than half of the river's width before giving way to a series of ropes and tethered rafts serving as ferries. On the river itself, dozens of small boats drift along the slow, murky waters as the fishers of Vogler ply their trade. And then from that, How does level 2 sound? Sounds nice. <laughs> then on you go. Okay. And that's where I leave it for you. When next oh, you play... Of magic. When next you play at the end of the month, beginning of next month, it will be a full session with everyone, hopefully. And from that... We will be able to get into the very emotional first part of the story.
Skills of War. Right. Oh, let us begin. First and foremost, as we always do, thank you very much for coming. It will be a short fun session that will get all the pieces in place for the upcoming main session on Monday, I'm sorry, Tuesday the 31st because I'm giving John that bit extra time. So, with that, given though you know each other, most of you, your characters would know each other. Oh. As that stands, let's go around the voice chat and say who we are, what our character's name is, and what their class and subclass is. A bit of background story, as you have been on the road for several days prior. Who would like to go first? Uh, I don't have my character sheet with me every day. What's my subclass? Uh, ascended dragon. Ah, okay. Gotcha. You don't do dragon? Three. <laughs> monk is monk. That's it. My god. I suppose, I, I suppose I will jump first for Lou's character, Fane. Fane is a Eldrin monk. Way of the Ascended Dragon. Looks a bit like that. Lou, what other information would you like to give us in regards to your character's backstory? Well, uh, I don't think Fane would have been very mouthy about where he's from, what he's done. Uh, well, what would be a good reason? What would be a good and, reason for joining the army? Oh, we're in the army. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I would say so. That's the best way to get you all together. Um, yeah. Unless you are all three childhood friends. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all Fane is going to tell them that he's had a normal life until now. He thought he should serve, so he did. Yep. Yeah. Who'd like to go next? I'll talk. I'll talk more about that with you later. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll keep all that. Who would like to go next then? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I'm gonna be turning you up. You're actually a wee bit quiet there, my guy. You're up, Phil. You're just really quiet for me. All right. Yeah. Uh, what do you want me to say? Because again, I'm I'm very new, so I'm your, clue. Just your name, who you are as a like you know as a plit person. Your character's name. Your I'm character's okay. race. What? I'm Ben. Anyway. <laughs> uh, no, I just... Uh, I'm at university and I do a lot of drawing and stuff. So I drew my character. So I drew... Uh, Baralis. That's his name. He's an elf. Uh, ranger. Subclass... Is subclass like Gloomstalker? Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's your subclass. Yeah, see? I'm shit hot at this. <laughs> um... I was still kind of working on his backstory because I couldn't really make a decision, but I kind of had the idea that he was part of like a a sort of clan in the wild, like a small little clan he was raised, um, and they kind of got picked off by different creatures and stuff like that until it was kind of just him. So he was, he's great with a bow and arrow, so he decided to enlist into the army as an archer. And... Last but not least, Tipler. Tyler. My guy. Well, I play Guy Called Exodus. Cue the music. So he's a rogue. He's going to be a swashbuckler. Doesn't look very swashbucklery, but you know what's in there. Um, Some nice art. Um... He is a part of a religion that I need to research what religions there are. So, 
As it has, as it has been for some time, you have been traveling. You've been traveling for quite some time. Unsure as to whether or not you've been going in the right direction. Meeting with certain people, you found that on your way to a town called Vogler, you are on the right course, but you've been warned. It has been a rather tumultuous few weeks. An awful lot of things have happened, and as a result, the roads may not be very safe. As you travel on for a period of time, you all find that you should travel to Vogler for the same reason. You are there to attend a funeral. This particular funeral it hits hard. An old friend of yours has recently passed. Each of you is, at your own point, received a letter in the post. This particular letter stated Dear friend, I am Becklin Ulf Valheim. I've heard much about you from our mutual friend Espen Greenshield. It graves me to say and share this news, but our dear friend Espen has passed away peacefully here in his home in Vogler. May fortune and the old gods protect his soul. Espen's friends are holding a memorial for him in the manner he always wanted. It will take place here in Vogler on the eve of the Kingfisher's Festival. I write to ask you to do Espen one last honour and attend. Should you come, accommodations will be available at the Brass Crab. Though the circumstances are sad, I am eager to meet you and through our memories to revel in the life of our great friend. Becklin Ulf Verhen. Knight of the Crown. You all share some stories in regards to Espen. And you feel a short commemoration with it. You feel a small bond betwixt yourselves as well. As you realise you have a lot more in common than what meets the eye. Your walk through these grassed lands are quite tumultuous. As you look around, there are farmers on some sides, and when they see you as they plough their fields, they tend to move back a little. As you are walking for some time, you eventually hear just off to the side, what sounds like battle. At first, you're not inclined to follow this through. You have more important matters at hand. As you walk on a little longer, eventually, you hear rustling and bustling. As you travel down the road, you hear a quivering scream from around the corner. Please! Help! As a young man shouts as he rushes round the bend towards you. As he comes round, you see this terrified, barely coherent, frantic man scramble to the ground as you watch as he kicks up dirt and mud. As he looks, as he comes down, sprinting as he hits the ground. Help! Please! Please help us! As he looks at you. What's wrong? We've attacked strange creatures of 
That's our convoy, please help! Of course, how how far? This way! He's gonna start sprinting once more, kicking up the dirt from behind us. You can hear the frantic breaths. This man is low to the ground, trying his hardest to keep to himself. Sprints down the road and once more round the corner. As you follow on round, you approach a place quite far into a small forest region. As he slows down, he kind of puts his hand out. Just, just, I'll sit around this corner. I, can I inside check him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't trust this guy. It's a five, I believe. He is frantic. And the look on his face is pained. Is he just, um, is he just one wall in my but He, is he just a what, sorry? Is he just one wall or am I able to roll? Uh, would you like to roll? I would like to roll. Then I'll roll for you. Uh, ben, you. you are also free to make the insight check if you wish on the attributes section of your sheet. Um, insight just under history. Lou, you get a nat one. Sir Jalen, you get a nat one. <laughs> a nat one for five. Wow. That's another That's nat one. Uh, wow. Wow. I will say, We're... however, as he stands, as you just look, you peer on out round the corner. You see a wrecked wagon lying toppled, surrounded by armoured corpses and strange figures picked through the remains. From beneath the figure's dark cloak, just scaly wings and sharp reptilian features. Uh, I I only know a little bit about Dragonlands. These things are not known, right? These like this is all. These things are completely unknown to the people. Uh, do they bear resemblance of? Do we know about dragons in general? Like dragons. From, like, war? Dragons right. in Dragonlands are have long gone from the land. Um, mm -hmm. In the Sword Coast, when you see dragon, someone goes where? In Dragon in Dragonlands, in the world of Kryn, when you see dragon, they go ha ha, pull the other one, buddy, and walks away laughing. But they they're, they're like they are like myths, right? So they they're would, more mythological creatures than they are would, actual creatures, right. yeah. If one had like seen like a painting of one of these things or like a storybook drawing, right? Would, yeah. Would one be able to connect the two, or would that be a no? I think that'd be very hard. Okay. You would... That is the creature. Exit... Oh, I see okay. that there is the creature that uh, Barolas can see a front. Now, if you wish to remain hidden, I will require. A stealth check from the group as a group stealth check so I'll just take the average oh, oh, Exodus is already rolling for stealth uh, Jalen what would you like to do yeah I'm gonna roll for stealth as well okay I'll roll yeah, yeah, and I'll just quickly do the math. I'm pretty sure that we are good. 22, 30, 48, 48 divided by 3. 1, carry the 1, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18. Average of 16. Let's use all kind of look round. You should now have freedom of movement, however it is. Uh, I suppose for the sake of Jalen, I will have to once more share my screen. Uh, 
So, for everyone else, you have freedom of movement. Uh, you are kind of hidden behind a rock as you see this particular area. You can see the bend followed by the footprints where it veered and skid before crashing. You see the hoof marks further on. Barlas, you also see the dead armoured soldiers as these dragon creatures seem to pick through it. Not being the creatures, but wanting to, uh, Exodus would go to move on top of the rock. Uh, probably by coming through this, like, lighter side over here, and then climbing up it, like, that, if that possible. That is possible, yeah. Alright, do you want me to roll for that, or am I good to just move? Uh, no, you'd be good to just go with that normally, yeah. Alright, spotting one of these creatures, he would be amazed, right? He doesn't, they are humanoid. Clearly, they, they stand on two legs. They have the, you know, the, the outline of a man, almost. If a bit twisted. Uh, this is like a, a whole new race, almost. Um, I guess he would, he would study them for a bit. Um, waiting for the party to come on an agreement on whether to attack or not. Same going to follow away behind him. So. You can't see, is that a fucking... You can't see because yeah. I walled a tree, I do apologize. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Kane wants to uh, suggest capturing one of them after we butt to the rest. I doubt we'll be able to bring one back alive. Look at them. They're huge. I feel like we could just bring a corpse. That's proof. Mm -hmm. And where would that uh, Fane be, by the way? Because he is still currently like quite behind the rock behind Barrelus. I wanted to follow up. Yeah, I'll follow him up anyway. We all take in the high ground, okay? Boom, boom. I'll just move you because there's a wall there. There we go. Can I see my sheep really quickly? Do I have anything ranged on me? A dart. What level is this campaign again? What was that? What level was this campaign again? Uh, this is a 1 through 11. So we're in level 1. Level 1 right now. That, that is amazing. I don't even think we should fight this thing. That's the... Uh, yeah. For some reason, I thought we were level 9. We'll see for the size these creatures are. They are more studgy and pudgy than they are built. On the rocks opposite, however, overlooking this whole situation, you see this. Um, if anything. Fane says if we do decide to try to take them out, I think we should do a little range fight rather than a close fight. I mean, how many people here have anything range on them? So you look around at these creatures, I will say, um, you can roll a perception check if you wish. Did you see all of us or just him? Anyone who wants to. Alright. Anyone who wants to what? Roll a perception check. I'll do that one. Alright. We'll see. 21? 21. As you look around, you notice a rather strange symbol on the chest plates of these creatures. They yeah, have chest plates. It's you point this out to your companions. That's something you probably shouldn't have seen. Don't worry, I'm not paying you that much attention. Well, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is it? Uh, I just got to get up our... Where are me gods? That's here. Mm. 
you but I like the people who are with me uh, how many of us are long range like you said exactly yeah I've got a bow I'll see you notice a particular symbol on the chest of these creatures because say we're on the rock right we can just like go down on them which is not um, well, the long range options and they can't get up here without climbing and say they try to climb up you can attack them it's more like a funnel type strategy on their chest you know yeah. A crest, the symbol on the left that you see, the one of the circular star of red, blue, green, black, and white. Roll a religion check. Anyone who wishes. Oh, well, that one. Oh, yeah, religion. Religion? Yeah. Who's good at religion? Yep. Oh, I'm yeah. Good at religion. That's me. Yeah, not me. You can roll. You don't need to be good to roll it. Uh, you can just roll it, because you never know. Dice are random. It's great. Wow. Like, uh, I love it. It's a ten sucks. Straight seventeen, straight ten, and a dirty sixteen. Barless. Exodus, you note that the symbol on these beasts' chest, on their breastplate, is that the symbol of Thakaris? Sorry, Taha. Takesis. Takesis. The symbol of Takesis. The god. The mythological, most evil of dragons. Unbeknownst to your characters, unbeknownst to your characters, but what should be known to use as players. She has another name. It's Tiamat. Oh, that's a big one. Damn. Yep. This is essentially this universe's version of Tiamat. Could you could you mm -hmm. write that name down for me? Is that yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a note about. I'm gonna take notes of my biography. It's a fucking weird one. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it had a pronunciation guide here at the front of the book, and I'm just like, yeah, don't need really fucking worry about that. There it is there, yes. Takesis. Takesis. That's her name. So, ta ta ki -sis. Yeah, I just copy and paste ta ki -sis. Alright. <laughs> um, so what type of armor are these guys wearing again? Quite hard to see, as... <laughs> The creatures themselves are scaly. They could be wearing a scale armor. They could also be a natural armor. You don't know whether or not it's a full-on breastplate or, you know, like a full-on like metal plate armor, half plate, or if it's just some form on the scale. Uh, I guess this is going to look back to the group. I don't think we can take them. Where oh, is there anybody? Is there anybody that they're surrounding, or like looting something? They're looting an empty, turned-over caravan of supplies. Mm -hmm. I think be... we should. Uh... Okay, so here's the plan, or at least one that I can So they're they're attacking something and looting it. If these people are an actual threat, I think we should. Let them finish what they're doing, and then track them to whatever place they want to. That last bit, I couldn't hear you. 
I think we should track them to whatever place they run to after they are finished moving. Because this is uh one, two, three, four, five, and I believe. You're right. My only concern and, is if we die, if we get caught, then this discovery is lost. Mm -hmm. And I think they look more like a group of individuals rather than just those five. Because it's extremely unlikely that just those five would be wearing so let's place them. I'm sorry, um, it's just rubbish. Could you give us that once more, Bean? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was just saying track them down for whatever they're done. Whatever. I think he's saying just follow and track them. Ooh. Right. I'm not sure. What what do you think? Um Highlander, what's your character's name? Aralis. Aralis. Alright, you Aralis. That's it. Aralis? It's because I'm Scottish, I don't pronounce the last A, but it's Baralas. Oh, Baralas. Hey, I, I neutralize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I got you. So you turn to Baralas, say, what do you think? I don't think we can take them, but do you think we could track them? Smart plan to follow. Let's do that. Alright. He would, uh... I guess just lay low, lay low for the time. Work on being more sneaky on this rock. She watch for a period of time. These creatures seem to look through the boxes, taking certain things. Okay. Pardon me. Pardon me. Let's use. I'm just checking our languages now. These all here. And Rather off. Though you've never heard it. You understand the language being spoken is draconic. As you hear the one on the ledge up here. She watches it stands, the wing unfurl. So it looks over. Time to go. And they all kind of look up, and the wings are unfurl. So they all start to flap and fly away down in this direction. So, can we stay under the cover of trees? You are in a forest, so yes, you can stay under the cover of trees. However, they can also stay under the cover of over those trees. That's the thing. Mm. I don't think they... I'm pretty sure they would recognize a bunch of people following them. I just don't want to get caught by these things. <clears throat> so are you following? It's going to be up to Boralus and Fane here because Exodus is BRB. Yeah, I say we follow. Hopefully, we're all good enough on start. Boralus? What was that? Do you follow or do you counter argue? No, no, follow. I was trying to figure out the page wasn't working for me. That's alright. She's run through the forest, chasing, looking up every so often, to see whether or not you're in the right direction. You seem to come to a cresting hill. You just run up, watching, watching. Just as you start sprinting. So, Marla, she's gonna reach and stop. You reach and come to as you just jut. Your arms come out. A huge, depth 
crevished ravine on one end. Must be about a hundred foot drop. On the other end, must be a good 20 foot away. As you watch as these beasts flap on over, as you see plumes of smoke coming from the other end. Mm -hmm. I'm back. What, uh, what did I miss? Chased them, came to a creviced hill, just it happened, just kind of stopped. 100 foot sheer drop cliff, 20 foot on the other end, smoke. And the draconians flying off. <laughs> Even if we did go back and tell somebody, I don't think they believe us. I mean, we have the man. Let's try that. Um, let's go on. But what yeah. about the funeral? I, bet, I thought we already attended that. I'm sorry. No, you're yeah, on your way to it. To it. What, oh, okay. what do we... This news is of most important. Yeah, um... God. Hmm? Uh, people... People get robbed every day. The only thing that's different is that this is a different new race. So yeah, um, I think he's gonna send a funeral. I mean... I hold no personal grudge against him. Could we report these findings? Uh, this is always we could we... So we're in the army, right? You're in a, you're you in a military, yeah. There's military outposts everywhere, right? So we would be able to go to the town and, like, report this information, right, while we're there? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. You could even report it to the town itself. It's always, you know, yeah. if there's not a military post, there's always a mayor, and a mayor would obviously be able to pass on to central governments. Yeah, all right. Then, yeah, let's just, yep. let's just keep going, then. So we'll see as you make your way back, notating everything that you've seen. You once more can pass. Must be about a five minute walk. So you come back to the ruined caravan. So you do, you see the young man you know, scraping away at things and dragging the bodies over to the side of the road before going through the boxes and such to see that which remains. So you take a look. You see the bodies. They look somewhat familiar. You can roll a history check if you'd like. I will do that. Do I recognize the bodies in the cart? No, you don't. You don't recognize the bodies. Ooh. Oh, le oh, no, nice. dirty twenty. Oh, yeah. Well, see, for this campaign, I'm gonna roll all my shit privately, like there's an actual GM screen. As you look at these bodies. I'm sorry? I was going to say, as you look at these oh, bodies... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Else. Yeah, he's talking to someone else, isn't he? You too? No wonder why the guy bust his pants so many times before. It's wild, man. Yeah, if they don't, if they don't see you, they just... Yeah, man, Bye. that's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just look upon these bodies you note that these are knights knights of Solamina Solamnia sorry these are the most prestigious knights in the realm these are the guys you call when all else fails now it's personal three of them 
lay dead, mauled by these creatures. As the boy drags them on, you see their armor torn to shreds with claw marks and stab marks from the swords. Parts of their face gouged away by the claws. <coughs> Horned helmets with the horns snapped and bent. As the young man looks. Well, I guess they won't be needing any of this. Ah, uh, I've what, what is, I've got what I've got. What if you just want anything? What are we trying to do? Oh, he's just moving yeah. the bodies off the road, but he's ta he's taking what he you know he's taking what he wants <laughs> from from the from dead. The yeah, from the dead in the from... cart. He's he's not caring. Um, so these knights would be a part of the army, right? Yes. Uh, these are our people. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm pretty sure if we would have fought those uh, those guys, we would have died. Yeah, what I tell you? Would we have died? You asking me as the god? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! We would have died. <laughs> they said these are the guys that you call whenever we have trouble. These are the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> Um, These are more local level in that regard. The knights are like what you aspire to be. Yeah. You are um, Lord. So, real question. Do we care about the boy taking stuff? I don't know, do you? Because, because mm -hmm. personally, Thane does not. He only cares about uh, his people's body. As long as he's not taking their armor, their swords, or anything like that, he's fine. But, like, provisions and stuff he can have. So, I'll say for the theatre of it, on the side of the road, he has placed the three bodies. Both, mm -hmm. as, well, all three of them as straight as they can, with their swords in the ground by their head, almost like makeshift graves, if you will. And their helmets then cling the top it. Okay. Um, so, as long as. He doesn't touch anything that affects their honor and death. He doesn't care about him taking their provisions and stuff. Dude, he doesn't. He he wouldn't even care if he helped himself to a couple of provisions. <laughs> but it's all about what his party cares about more than uh, because Fane himself he plans on taking these men's bodies and he's not gonna let them stay out of here. Stay out here. What does Barless want to do? He's not too bothered. He just kind of gets on with it. He doesn't really care about mm -hmm. anybody else if he doesn't know them. Oh, well, uh, Exodus is currently being called. So don't worry. You can see. Young guy, you know, looks around and you watch as he kind of collects up three purses and a large sack. It's, uh,. Does anybody need any rations? He says, does anybody have any rations? Does anybody need any rations? I'll take some. I'll take some. And, uh... Is it okay if I keep this, or would you like it as he takes the bag, you hear a... Slight... <clears throat> jingle jangle. Jingle jangle. Uh... Uh, I've been paid, but you know. Yeah, I'll shoot. If he's if he's offering it, we'll take it. <laughs> Wait, would would you get See, offered? Then he said jingle jangle. Fane, like he's gonna throw Fane and Barrelless a small pouch. She's gonna put your hand up. Ting. As you take the pouch, which is you know like this, you crank it open. You note that it is teeming with gold. Wow. You each receive 20 gold. Love that. 
Uh, before and for Rush. Before Fane's gonna transport these uh, knight's bodies, he's gonna check the rest of the cart. See what the boy uh, didn't miss, or did miss. How many rations was that? Five days. Um, there was a total of uh, eight days worth of rations. You were gone, so I gave Fane and Barrowless four, uh, just Damn. to split it through easily. But you know, he's get to town. You can sort all that part between you. As you look through this particular box. Uh, you know, you do find all manner of mainly clothing and sort of miscellaneous food provisions, sacks of grain and such. Let's see, boy looks. That was uh, to feed the horses. Uh, I was hired to tend to the horses on the travels. Um, there were some swords, daggers, and ingots that were stolen um they seem to have left most of the food but rendered it seemingly unusable mm. okay um so there's three nights right three nights okay if you guys mind you uh pick up a body let's get hauling Not too strong. I'm not, be sure, fine. I'm not you, sure. If you are like, if you're gonna lift the body, then you're gonna lift the body. If you're not gonna lift the body, just say. I mean, how how far are we? Okay. Um, you were about half a day's away. However, with your additional weight, you're probably looking around three quarters of a day. It's the, right thing to, it's the right thing to do. Let's do it. It's not about how heavy these men are. It's about their honor. They fought for what's right. So they deserve a, at least a proper burial. Uh, Barrow, yeah. does he take a body? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll guess if I have to. <laughs> you don't have to, man. <laughs> You don't have to. You can say no. Make oh, your case not, for it and such. It's not, it's not right to drag one and leave two, so <laughs> pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep leaving. My moral compass is tingling. <laughs> She's carrying these bodies. Headed back the way you came. You still gleam some information from the young man. His name, Reese. You are at a farm nearby. They didn't know the soldiers, and they'd heard them talk about enemy troops in the region. And she is, we're walking on, tells you that he mainly hid, but there have been attacks recently on the road. He knows that the Knights of Slum... Solamnia... The, the Just call it Salamina. <laughs> Salamina, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Knights of Salamina, he knows that... They were deployed to investigate, and he was she, simply... uh... Reese R H Y S. That's a man's name. It'd be crazy if this was like the same thing I watched. She wouldn't be goddess of the moon, would she? Who wouldn't be goddess of the moon? Selamina. Um. What is she goddess of? I believe there is a god with a very similar name. Let me just quickly pull you through. Uh, uh, gods, uh, Gillian, Luminar, Ronox, Sylvan, Shane, Gods of Evil, Natari. Is that not a type of porn? Mm. That's Gods of Neutrality. Paladin, Dun Dun Dun, Madri. Solinari is a god of the moon. However, Solamnia is a different thing altogether. Okay. Salamnia as a town, which I'll point out in the map, okay. don't worry. Okay. Yeah. She is soon part ways with the boy. Make your way through your town. Make your way through. You... Well, these... At least these knights' bodies will be proof enough that uh, they were attacked by something horrifying. There are story recounts out. You make your way 
like a, an almost dusk felt night. You should arrive at some large gates. So you do. You enter into a small town. The fishing village of Vogler clings to a spit of land reaching into the Vingard River. Wooded cliffs overlook the community and only the path from the north descends past the ivy-coated remnants of a crumbling stone keep. The village is modest wooden buildings clustered in a quaint central circle along the riverbank. Jutting into the river, out of place and seemingly out of line, stands an incomplete stone bridge of incredible artisanal ship. The structure clearly dates before the cataclysm, eclipsing even its modern piers in both size and sturdiness. The bridge crosses less than half of the river's width before giving way to a series of ropes and tethered rafts sever serving as ferries. On the river itself, dozens of small boats drift along the slow, murky waters as the fishermen of Vogler ply their trades. You enter into the small village, looking around. The place is bustling. Children roam the streets, merchants have up stalls, games on every corner, festivities around. And they just, uh, he is walking through his knight's body. Yeah, no, I would like to, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I, I, I would like to, before we get into, before oh. we get into, <laughs> before we get into, I would like to take out my, uh, bedroll. Because okay. I can just get a new, I can just get a new one while we're here. Uh, let me make sure I have a bedroll. I thought everyone starts with a bedroll. Depends on your cat. Oh. I do not have a bedroll. Fuck, I wonder how, do any of you guys have a bedroll? Can we, how many, how many can be stuff into a bedroll? <laughs> nah. Yeah, he doesn't care. But instead of like carrying the knight on his shoulder like a uh, like a bounty or something, he's gonna carry it in both arms like a princess. <laughs> it, it uh, it matters. The way you, the way you carry yourself matters. I uh, count to the other uh, party members. Carry in a better position, and then I, I assume there's like guards in the front gate, or something, or no? Not necessarily. No, this is just the town gate. They are uh, clearly predating something that happened. Uh, you can roll a history check if you wish for a little bit more information upon the Kingfisher's Festival. Little did you know, I love history. I'm an academic. No, I'm not. Yeah. Academic enough for me to say that these gates are probably a remnant of the time back when Solamnia was fighting the forces of Istar during a clash near the town centuries ago. The Kingfisher Festival is a festival in order to commemorate Solamnia's win against the invading forces. And so these gates are more just there just in case. As a mm -hmm. solemn reminder. You also know, however, it's because you've done good enough there, the King Fisher Festival is also taken from the name of the King Fisher symbol that the Knights of Salamnia and the Bird Fishers of Volgar consider lucky. And so this would be deemed as a celebration of luck, juxtaposed with yous walking in with three dead bodies. In uh, Knights of Salamnia armor, I've just been going dead out. <laughs> We're uh, either going to walk all the way town, walk all the way through the town to the nearest guard post or soldiers, whatever, or wait till they get called on us. Either or is best for us. 
let's just move quickly towards. I, I don't know where the the guard center is. Let's easy look around. There are people all over. Though they don't seem to pay too much attention to you as they are enjoying their own festivities. There are <laughs> elders, youngers, children, and all sorts around. Love that. Well, uh... Well, so as you do look down, you can see the road diverts down to a junction. Do we have any idea where the, uh, where the place that we would want to take these people would be? Uh, morticians, not something I'm seeing on the map. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say you could potentially, I'd say you could look around for maybe a guard or such. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I will take your sheet to roll the perception check on that, but anyone else is more than likely to, more than able to. Hell yeah. I'm rolling high rolls, boys. Another private roll. Man, so sneaky. Yeah, I was headed to self-roll expecting combat, and then it was like, mm -hmm. ah, user taking the John approach. <laughs> We'll see as Fane and Exodus look round. Barless, you look, however, the flashing lights and the noises seem to overload your senses. It's not something you're particularly used to, is this level of festivities and noise, given that you are more of the Lone Ranger type for the most. But for yourselves, you do notice that there is a guard, dressed down for the most part, but who carries himself with that weight and gravitas. So he's gonna just look around. He notices you, but doesn't seem to pay too much heedance to the bodies, as this is a festivities and. Oh, they could be drunk. Uh, yeah, um. You gotta, uh. Walk over to him. It's kind of like. Oh, hello. Uh, me. How may I help? Um, how should I put this? Uh, Fane's gonna just go like, uh, so we're looking for, uh, wherever soldiers might stay or call home guards something like that ah um well we usually stay in our homes ah okay it's not okay um so here we have uh three knights of Salimnia. oh peculiar oh uh we found them on our way here they are uh, armor torn apart there were uh draconic beasts uh crack me up it's gonna looks at the armors and such to see what's going on he's gonna he's gonna look dead at him in the most deadpan face he's not kidding it's not a joke he's like he's i'm gonna... afraid my friend is quite serious these creatures wore symbols of going into my biography so I can. <laughs> ta, ta, kisses. Ta, ta kisses. Kisses. I'll put up a pronunciation guide and I'll give you it. Don't worry, I'll give you the one from the book. <laughs> I guess. Is he gonna. Looks. I mean, while she has many followers, there's not been dragons here for. Quite some time. Neither dragon folk neither. However, um, <clears throat> given the unfortunate <clears throat> that has come to these, um, if you just leave them there by the racks, I will get down the positioned guards. We will take those bodies and 
Report what's happened to the mayor. Um. Yes, sir. He's gonna. Nice to be. He's going. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Fane's gonna lay the body down, and he's going to stress to him that this is no joke. There has not been dragons for a while, but from our own account, there are stealing lizards tore these men apart. <laughs> kind of looks you can see you can see the gash marks from claws and whatever burn marks that may be on their armor this is what the legends say no burns all slashes and no. gashes all slashes and gashes it could be uh would it be set would the slashes be set by claws instead of swords or would it be set like swords that both that both they're both yeah, yeah, but just, just the, uh, bottom marks in there. It's gonna look some... I'll keep my eye. Until then, uh, yes, are you just passing through, or are you, uh, are you staying? Mm. Yeah, same manner. We're here for a funeral. Oh, so, my condolences. Uh, would that be... The funeral of Ibsen. He's gonna say that name one more time. Ibsen. Ibsen Greenshield. Yeah, so that's correct. So, that's being held down at the, uh, the crab. Asked. Uh, go down this road, and then just take straight right, and it'll be your Third left. It's a building there on the waterfront. Shaped like a crab, mm -hmm. funnily enough. I'm going to try to follow those directions best I can. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you ain't even in here. My eye, my dumbass. Is he gonna? Oh, no, I see it. Oh. Yeah, is he gonna, you know, place the bodies down? And... <clears throat> is he giving them the ones over before running up the hill to the large fort? Behind. So you just head on down through. The festivities are on their way. As you look around, all manner of people are passing through. There is time before the funeral in the morning however with that time comes time to say thank you very much for joining us tonight and we can now kick things off on Tuesday mm -hmm. for the full Dragonlance experience we can really pick things up if you made it to the end then first and foremost thank you very much i uh, do appreciate it and i should hopefully maybe potentially see you very soon until then thank you enjoy the rest of your day